just... In 2018, Cleveland yeah. running backs coach Freddie Kitchens was promoted to offensive coordinator after a mid-season head coaching change. Let's go. Hard Under two. Kitchens' leadership and play calling, the offense flourished. Baker rolls, right fires, and it's up! Caught in, in the end zone! Touchdown! Let's go, Fred! As the Browns won five of their last seven games. Unbelievable turnaround! In January, the team hired Kitchens to be their new head coach. It's always going to be about one thing and one thing only, and that's winning football games and putting a good product on the field. You said in your press conference that you were a Cleveland Browns fan, so walk me through how a kid from Alabama was a Cleveland Browns fan growing up. Well, it just so happened back then in the 80s, really, I don't know how the games came on television, but it seemed like any time I'd watch NFL football, the Browns would be on. So they just became my team, and I like teams with storied franchises, storied yeah. history. Well, look around. I like history. All you got to do is look at these walls to see yeah. the history. And I went to the University of Alabama, so history and passion and all those mm -hmm. things mean something to me. Raised in Gadsden, Kitchens was named Alabama's Mr. Football in high school and played quarterback for the Crimson Tide from 1993 to 1997. Kitchens' pass is touchdown. Why did you want to be a coach? I didn't. No? I didn't ever want to be a coach. Uh, so how, how, how did this all happen? I've, I've, um, I'll tell you how I got into coaching. It was the fact that I couldn't live without football. It wasn't that I wanted it, I just couldn't live without it. I, um, you know, I finished at the University of Alabama. I went and played football in Italy, broke my arm, came back and didn't know what Italian? I was going to do. What do you I got? used to could. Yeah? yeah? It's a lot like Spanish, that's all I know. Okay. <laughs> Very similar. Amore. <laughs> um, came back, got a job selling cars. And, uh, I imagine you would be a phenomenal car salesman. I was a, I, two of the most proud moments of my life were the salesman of the month at Magnolia Nissan BMW in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. There's a whole thing to being a car salesman, right? Yeah. What was your tactic? How did you how did you get those cars off the lot? I think you got to know the person that was walking on the lot. Okay. You know, the same as you do with the football players. Good job up front, though. Good job up front. You gave us a chance. Good job. Good job. Everything I'm about as a coach is building relationships. I learned a long time ago that this is a people business. I ain't lost confidence in you. I just don't want you losing yourself. All right, because you can play. You know you can play. As coaches, we're teachers. And I'm sure you had a teacher at some point in your life that made you a better person. So I'm invested in people, all right, not just players. For the car salesman turned coach, Kitchens has been around the block. A series of test drives as a college assistant led him to the NFL. Beginning with Dallas in 2006, and then 11 seasons in Arizona. Freddie's one of my favorite people on the planet. He's one of those guys that whoever meets him just falls in love with the guy. He's genuine, he's honest. You talk to him for five minutes and you walk away going, man, that's a good dude. Great coach. Kitchen's close rapport with his players may have been the difference between life and death in 2013. Walked out onto the field, and then as I was jogging over, I stopped and turned around and realized I heard something pop in my chest. He had made the comment like, man, does anybody else ever get dizzy? Or I, I forget his exact words. And I kind of remember looking over him, and I had said something to our team trainer, like, hey, go check Freddie out. Kitchens had suffered an aortic dissection. He was airlifted into emergency surgery where he endured a nine-hour open-heart operation to save his life. Obviously, you never want to, to have happen what you had happened, but did it change you? Um, the only thing it changed about me, I think I always tried to live life to the fullest, mm -hmm. all right? But the one thing it did change for me was the fact that I understood what I meant to other people, ah. okay? So uh, when you start getting calls and texts, you realize that, well, maybe you did impact some people along the way. And, you know, that's kind of a good feeling. Ah! <laughs> you know, in reality, nothing much has changed. I'm just a football coach, you know? 
You're the and head coach great, of the Cleveland Browns. You want to like just take that all in for a second? I will eventually. Yeah, yeah. you haven't so, had it hasn't settled in yet? I don't think so. Really, you know, I get up and go to work every day. And I would say the biggest advantage that I say that I've had is now I get to communicate with everybody. That's it. Hell yeah. As a oh, former a quarterback, though, I imagine the relationship with your quarterback is different, having played the position, is it not? It definitely is, uh, from the standpoint of, of just knowing what he's seeing. Get in big people and just run them, man. Right, They're not going to stop us. Let's go. Because at the end of the day, Baker has to do a, a lot of the same things I have to do as far as he's got a lot of personalities in the huddle, too. Yeah. He's right. got to make sure they're all in it for the same reason, mm -hmm. and that's ultimately to win the game. What is Freddie Kitchen's game plan done for you guys as an offense? Just making us comfortable. You know, I think the way that we communicate about it or the way that we talk about it, if we don't like something, we're not going to run it. As Cleveland's head coach, Kitchens is charged with changing a city's mindset and turning the Browns into winners. Since 1999, I understand and I relish the fact that there's been more downs than up, but that ends today. I, I promise you that. How do you indoctrinate yourself to a city, a city that is used to losing? What do you do? Well, first, I don't like the used to losing, all right? They've lost, but they have won before, okay. all right? There were some great teams in the 80s. They played in three AFC championship games. There were great teams in the 60s. They've won here before, but I think we're always the underdogs. We're the ones that nobody ever counts in. They're always counting out. There's always a winner. So if they keep score, we need to be winning because we've got to learn how to win. And lots of things go into play with that. Every day, every rep, every period, when we're competing, we're wanting to win because the fun's in the winning, all right? Always, the fun's in the winning. How much would it mean for you to bring a championship here? It would mean everything to the people in the locker room, to the city, to Northeast Ohio, but that's the only goal. Everything else we're short of that is not a successful season to me. Yeah, well, you're definitely making the best of this situation. I need to know if you're still doing the, uh, the whole play calling thing. I am. This season, yeah? I am. Why? Why do you want all this responsibility? That's going? the fun part. Oh, that's the fun part? Yeah. You're not letting go of that one? That's the fun part. Yeah. yeah? Okay, what's the first play call of the season? Um, a toss to Nick Chubb. There you go. I like that. <laughs> I don't know if we'll toss it. <laughs> I like it.